Edmund Trask, a frontiersman in 1639, originally from England, has met a camp around 150 miles from Plymouth. This would one day be the northeastern corner of Rhode Island. Edmund lives off the land in Scotland and hopes to one day expand the settlements to that point. He, among others of his kind, will have made America what it is today. Another bloody rabbit. That's all I can seem to find. He must be doing something wrong. Wait a minute. Maybe it's the gun. My gun is useless. I have to go back into town and trade for a new one. Thus, Edmund Trask rode back towards Plymouth for a new tradesman. For he knew a tradesman whose business was set upon the outer brinks of town. The tradesman's name was William Hill. The trip was long, and Edmund had to set numerous camps along the way. But, after a long while, he made it. So, what brings you to my post this day, Mr. Trask? Simply a brace of cronies and a dreadful need of a shotgun. Rabbits! That's all I can seem to find these days. So what is there to trade, William? Let me check on them for first. Not half bad. Not half bad. What would you like? As I said before, I need a shotgun. And I'll also take two knives. Two knives, no shotgun. I am in great need of a shotgun, but I will not just leave with that. Very well. One knife, one shotgun. My final offer. I will take it. Pretty good, pretty good. Very nice, very nice, thank you. So what news of town? There's really not much to say. We are still in good spirits with the natives, and we continue to trade with them as well. All I can say is, all is well in Plymouth. The natives of whom William Hill spoke actually saved the colony of Plymouth. In 1620, the pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock, and because they lacked knowledge of the area, they entered a starving time much like that of Jamestown in 1607 and 1608. Disease and hunger took half of Plymouth during their first winter. That spring, Squanto, an Indian of the Wampanoag tribe, taught the Plymouth colony how to plant crops, fish, hunt, and communicate with his tribe. Squanto died one year later, but his legacy would live on forever. That's a very good idea. Indeed I will. So, you will talk to the natives about your hunting problems tomorrow. Yes, sir. So what is your name? Semtuxoin. Semtuxet? Semtuxoin. You may name me Sem. What is your name? My name is Edmund Trask. You can call me Ed for short, or Edmund. What is your problem with hunting? All I can seem to catch is conies. Conies? What are these? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean rabbits. I understand. Your problem is, you've never shot with bow. Correct. Bows make you quiet. You sneak on them. With guns, you are heavy. You cannot sneak on them. You can use either a bow or a gun to sneak, but you must be quiet. Thank you, sir. Welcome, Ed. I got one of your conies. You're still doing better than myself. Think what I say. Sneak on, friend. Stay quiet. Shot. You got deer. Thank you. I don't think that's a bad shot. I'm just for myself. This was basically the life of a frontiersman. Hunting, cooking, trading, 
scouting, and the occasional encounter with an Indian, which might be good or bad, depending on where they lived. Edmund Trask, a fine example of the systematic life of the frontiersman, ends his story here. Although he and the rest of the colonial frontiersmen are all gone, we all see the result of their work and all around us every day. On which we live, the bravest men walk. The frontiersmen.